you have family in Gaza City. Uh, tell us about them. Um, so this is extended family on my mother's side. My mum's Palestinian, my dad's British. Three generations in the first week of the um, following the atrocities that were committed by Hamas on October the 7th, uh, an IDF bomb hit their house um, and they went to their local church, were Christian Palestinians, and they've been there ever since. There are 100 people now in that church and we are deeply, deeply worried for their safety. When I spoke to you yesterday on the phone, you had not been able to contact them because of the blackout. Have you now? Yeah, so the, the, I mean, the, the 24, 48 hours where the internet and everything else was cut was tortuous. I mean, not knowing if they were dead or alive, we're worried for them anyway. And I can't tell you what that did to us as a family. Um, and we have heard since, because uh, someone in the church has a, a foreign SIM which can connect to the Israeli networks, has put out a message saying that for now they're safe. I, I would say a couple of things though. First of all, I mean, I heard the Secretary of State just now suggest that you know, it's Hamas that's stopping them from leaving. That is not what's happening. I find it deeply offensive to suggest that Hamas is giving my family any kind of marching orders. That's not, they have nothing to do with Hamas. The reason they're there is because it's three generations. One is frail, we've got 11 year old twins. And so they, they, can't are move. they can't move. There's right. bombing in the south. There was bombing on the so-called safe route that they were given to get to the south. Nowhere in Gaza is safe. And Victoria, the conversation in Gaza now, I'm afraid to say, has changed. No longer are people saying, where do we go to be safe? The question they are now asking is, where do we want to be when we die? Oh my God. And that, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm, this is not hyperbole. This is very much what, not just from them, but their f friends and family that we are in touch with. It is, I cannot overstress the situation. So when I hear from the government that they want to minimize civilian casualties, I have to say to them, that they are failing. The, the strategy of you know, the UK government, America, and, and what they are essentially sanctioning in the way that Israel is responding. Israel has every right to respond, and I agree, it, it was us, we would respond too. Mm. But how they respond is so important, because at the end of this, we want to get to a point where we don't see this kind of carnage ever again, Which and is... we need to get to that two-state solution. That's what we have to aim for. And before that, you're calling for a ceasefire. A, a humanitarian ceasefire. What to does get, that mean? So to, to, it's actually not dissimilar from where the government is. We want to get aid in, we want hostages out. But where I would say we are different is we do think there needs to also be political space to take the temperature down. We're seeing escalatory language from the Israeli government at the moment. Okay. We need to take the temperature down and create space for those talks that will eventually lead to the ceasefire that I know so many in this country desperately want.